Welcome back. I'm going to do design assemble tutorial number four, enabling motion using joints and contact sets. So this is a really fun lab here. See this little animated GIF of this Geneva, sometimes called a star wheel. So we have a um, rotor here that's turning constantly. It's driven by a motor, so it has constant motion. And then this little cylinder called a cam follower enables the slot in the star wheel and the star wheel turns. So we're converting this continuous motion on the rotor into an intermittent motion on the star wheel. This is a very common old school machine for converting continuous motion into intermittent motion. They're still used, but you can do this nowadays with stepper motors and you can, which are driven by um, computers and you can get a much more complicated motion than, than you could with a mechanical device. But these are still around because they're simple and reliable. Uh, they're used in automation and machine design, which I did a, a lot of for some years. Anyway, um, the way we want to enable this capability in, the, in uh, Fusion 360, you do it with something called a contact set. Because like, if you follow this cam follower going around, as it enters the slot, it makes contact with the slot, right? And then that contact will push the star wheel around. Okay, so they call that a contact set in, uh, in Fusion 360. So let's, let's get started. So I have Fusion 360 going. You want to get into the data browser and go to basic training, assemblies, find the Geneva drive, open that up. Okay, you get all of this. So the first thing, well, let's see what we got. We got Geneva drive assembly. We have the frame, the frame sub assembly, the cross or star, I call it, sub assembly, and then the rotor sub assembly. The rotor sub assembly has these five components in it. Now we want those five components to act like a group. So we could put rigid joints, we'd have to put one, two, three, four rigid joints, which would take a while. So there's a faster way called a rigid group. Okay, so you can um, select that and then in the browser select these five components. Okay, make, make sure you got five and not something extra. Make sure include child components is selected and click OK. Okay, now it adds in the in the rotor subassembly, it adds this rigid group um, tab or folder. I'm not sure what to call these little squares. I guess they're folders. Anyway, so that's how you know that you have the rigid group because you never, you can't see it any other way. Well, it's in the timeline down here that you added one. Anyway, so we want that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is move this rotor into this hole here. So that's a regular joint. So we, you click assemble joint and the uh, first component is the rotor. So click the click the view the view cube and get up in there. Okay you want see this surface here you want to mouse over that and then hold down control to activate the the uh, joint look origin here and, and then click okay and then rotate back now this rotor will rest against this surface I guess it just rubs on this on this surface here seems like it should have a could be a bearing in here but anyway so m mouse over that hold down control so you the center becomes active and click and it moves it and gives it a little spin and that's what you want and you can in the joint dialog you can go to motion and you can verify that it, it's the correct type and you can change the axis if you wanted but you wouldn't want to but just for fun I'll change it to X and it spins around that way which we don't want and then I'll change it back to Z and it spins around that way just 
some stuff you can do. All right, so we'll, we're done with our joint, so I'll click OK. Now, where it, it added that in the main assembly, Geneva Drive, in the joints folder, Rev2 is that, is that joint that we just added. Okay, now, um, <coughs> excuse me. Now, we can click on this thing and, and twirl it around just by clicking and dragging. But see the pin or the cam follower just passes right through the star wheel because the we haven't told the software to look out for that kind of stuff. I think it's a processing thing. And also, I guess if you were designing and you were moving things around and everything started moving everything else, that would that would be inconvenient. So uh, yeah, so you need to tell it to watch out for this contact. Okay, I moved it so I have to revert the position. So I'll go up here and click revert. All right, now it's time to do the contact set thing. Tell it, we want to tell Fusion to look out for contact between these two components. So we go up here to uh, assemble and this click this enable contact sets. So that turns on the whole contact set processing with that capability. We click that and we end it with, it adds a folder here for contact sets. So that just means that contact sets is turned on. So right click that and actually add a new contact set in that folder. Okay, it wants to, you to select the, the bodies to, that are going to contact each other. And we, so we click this star wheel and then we click this. So we want the cam follower. We want it to be checking out, checking for contact between the, the cam follower and the star wheel, but we can't pick the cam follower because the case is in the way. So go up here to frame, rather, and turn off the eyeball. Okay, now you can get in here and select this cylinder. The frame comes back for some strange reason. And then click OK. OK, so now here, let's go to the, go to the front view. It's, so now when I click this and drag it, it the, con the roller contacts the star wheel and pushes it around like that. Isn't that cool? It's, it's way cool. Totally works. And it, you, if you go too fast, you can break it. Yeah, there. Wait. No. That's doing pretty good. There, I broke it. See? It's broke. That would never happen in real life, but computer breaks it. So I can, I can click revert position and anyway, it's playing around, but it, it works. It's pretty cool. This is, you know, we used to spend so much time just checking for motion because we didn't have the software tools to do it. But now, oh my God, you can even check to see that it doesn't contact. See the cutout in the rotor? See this, this uh, arc right in here? You can verify that it, that it clears through the entire range of motion. That would take forever to do in just say a 2D thing like AutoCAD to figure out where that arc needs to be. Oh my God. Anyway, um, as you can tell, I'm having fun with this. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you. See you next time.